Uh, now, just before we came on air today, King Charles gave his first official speech as monarch at the state opening of Parliament. The speech, which King Charles has no control over, lays out the government's policies for the year, including some of the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's plans to water down some of the net zero environmental policies. Now, some commentators have said that will have been delivered through gritted teeth, because, as we know, the King is, has very strong views on climate change. And that got us thinking today, saying, you know, how good are you at biting your tongue? There are situations, maybe, Brenda, where <laughs> you think, I shouldn't say it, I'm going to have to say it, or not say it, or <laughs> bite my tongue. Oh. Are you good at biting your tongue, or does it all just come tumbling out? I've learnt as the time has gone on, but I am somebody who does just like to say it if I see that there is something that needs to be said. I know from your face. Well, okay. yeah. Oh, no. So it's, well, especially in, in, if there's an injustice or if, you know, I, I, will, I will come out and say it. Um, but I do bite my tongue if I feel that the person might get upset by me saying it. I'll just... It's just not worth... The, the grief and the hassle and seeing someone upset and, and whatever. But uh, with my family, I don't bite my tongue at all. I tell them exactly what I think um, continuously, and I am that one that's known as, oh, don't, don't, cos she's going to start. <laughs> <laughs> that's Get that face. We yeah. know Brenda's face. I go, oh, she's off on one in a minute. Janet, I don't know. I think you probably could bite your tongue when needed. Yeah, when I started off in my career, I didn't say what I really thought. I had loads of opinions then. I was just like I am now, but I kept them more to myself. I think because I started off and it was like a man's world, and I, I realised I wasn't that stupid. If I needed to get on, I needed to do a lot of... <laughs> doing that listening <laughs> but not listening face, and I kept my opinions to myself. And then as I kind of crawled my way up the pyramid of power <laughs> and I became a boss, then obviously I could voice my opinions more freely, and I think it's much easier for women to do that now. Well, as I was going to say, when you started, particularly in journalism, and it was very much a man's world, and television, yeah. when I started in TV, Absolutely. very much a man's world. And people world. didn't hold back from telling you uh, what they thought. I mean, also, I've written a newspaper and online column since I was in my mid-twenties, so I was paid to have an opinion about anything and everything, and I do have opinions about anything and everything, and I do lose it here on uh, Loose Women. And I mean, only last week I was ranting about not sleeping and insomnia, <laughs> and, I, and Brenda looked completely <laughs> terrified when I described my night's sleep of not getting any sleep. So, yeah, I, I've learned to control my opinions a little bit. I think it's interesting, though, when, you know, definitely I am... Um, I voice my opinions more now because I think I've got more confidence as I've got yeah. older. So, like you, I was always very opinionated. I always used to fall out with my dad because um, my dad was very opinionated and we clashed with I adored him. But I was, you know, in the workplace, I, I like to think I was smart enough to go, well, he's an idiot, don't like what they've just said, that's wrong. It was wrong. terrible but when you're you very to do junior, that. When you're yeah. very junior, you have to play smart sometimes, don't you? Yeah, I go, so I found that I've changed as I've got older. When I was younger, I was brought up to be, a, you know, a very good girl and I was perfect and, you know, very good and very polite and you everything. You an only child. I, yes, I was yeah. an only child. And I was head girl in my junior school, oh. after my comprehensive school. Yeah. And, and it's only since being married and having children that I think I've sort of changed. I mean, just after I got married, there was an incident um, involving my family where I, where I defended my family. Um, something happened which I thought was so unjust and so awful and I wanted to protect my family and uh, it's the first time I've ever stood up and openly said no I will not take that was I think that it's hard disgraceful to it wasn't actually at the time because I was so angry about what had happened that I didn't find it hard and um I mean I it was it was huge and it was it was massive what came from it but I was quite prepared for that because I thought it was so unjust unju and so bad that I wanted to stand up and say no I don't agree with this and I'm not happy with it and I did it and then now since having children I'm so tired all the time I can't be bothered <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd rather just talk straight and call something out and say something but at work I mean you know, I keep a lid on things. I don't, you know, see the point in causing a stir. But, but as I've grown older, I think I've got more confidence now as a woman. Yeah. And, and when but I say I'm not happy. It's interesting you say that, but I still think in the workplace, when women are successful, if they voice their opinions, they're categorised as ranting and, yeah, you know, yeah. over the top. They're difficult. difficult. Um, 
and that's how we get stuck in that in that pigeonhole, and it just seems unfair. Yeah. And even though women have got more power in the workplace now, they still get demonised if they just yeah. speak in a false right yeah. way. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I mean, men are called ambitious, aren't they? Women yeah. are just like, oh, she's a bit forthright. Mm. She's got too much to say for herself. Yes. Mm. Well, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more to come. <laughs>